Um, I think we all agree that uh, investment in broadband infrastructure uh, has broad bipartisan support. And there's a simple reason. Uh, obviously, it's the engine of innovation um, in our society, a job-creating uh, machine. It's chaotic. It's entrepreneurial. It goes right to the enterprise identity of our country. Uh, but we always have to try to strike a balance. And so in 2015, uh, uh, the broadband companies, the wireless companies, invested $87 billion uh, in new infrastructure upgrades. That's great. Uh, and that's what we want. But at the same time, um, one half of all venture capital in the United States went to software and internet-specific startups, that is, companies which rely upon net neutrality to guarantee that they can reach all 320 million people in America uh, for their business model that they are trying to create. So that's a nice balance, $87 billion in infrastructure upgrade, half of all venture capital goes into software and internet-specific startups. Perfect balance. So my question is, uh, do each of you believe in a free and open internet? Yes or no? Ms. Cooper? We are not yet a service provider, and we expect that we're going to be subject to the rules of the Commission when we do provide service in a few years. And we expect that the rules are going to have many twists and turns as Congress, the Commission, and the courts continue to look at this. Yeah, so, you know, so yes and no. Yes, you do? You believe in a free and open net internet? We're not yet an internet service provider, sir. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, well, let me just let me just say that I have here a document here from 800 innovators, startups, uh, businesses from all 50 states, 800 of them, who have sent a, a letter calling for the retaining of the net neutrality rules so that they will be able to continue to be, to be uh, job creators uh, in this environment. Uh, and that's the tension here, uh, because in the absence of a guarantee, you can't raise the money from the venture capitalists uh, in order to reach their customers if you're going to be dependent upon the broadband carriers um, to be able to uh, provide um, the services. So to the extent to which we all agree that there should be more broadband, there should be. And $87 billion of investment says we're heading in that direction. To the extent to which new companies want to get in, you know, we shouldn't have laws to prohibit them from getting in at the city and town level. They should be able to get in. They should be able to provide the services. Broadband companies don't like that either. They, they, they want to shut down that kind of competition. There's no question about it. What they also want to do, broadband companies, is they want to kind of monetize the privacy of Americans. And we just had an, a successful effort by the Republicans to pass a Congressional Review Act repeal of the privacy laws that had been built uh, by the FCC into law in order to protect consumers so that you could not sell their information if uh, permission was not received from a consumer. Uh, do, do each of you believe that there should be a protection of privacy, uh, that a broadband provider uh, actually is required to provide so that you have to receive permission before you can sell that information? Uh, Mr. Resnick. Uh, well, Senator, actually, when I was chair of the FCC's Intergovernmental Advisory Committee, we took up these issues and we supported unanimously the net neutrality order as well as uh, the privacy, privacy rules that were Thank in you, place. Sir. I appreciate it. Yeah. Mr. Monica. Senator, uh, respectfully, this really isn't my wheelhouse. Okay, I that's fine. It's... Mr. Hendricks? Uh, although not a service provider, we do absolutely support consumer privacy protections, just not the ones the FCC had adopted. Uh, Mr. Downs. Uh, 
Yes, I agree. The, the framework that the FTC has used for years, which is opt-in, uh, has worked extremely well. Uh, sorry, for opt-out, which has worked extremely well. What yep. the FCC wanted to do was opt-in, and I don't think that was a good idea. Yeah. Ms. Cooper. As we design our constellation, we're committed to building a system that can protect the privacy and security of our customers. Yeah. Well, obviously, the problem with uh, opt-out is that, by definition, They've got all your information and they're using it unless you opt out. Whereas with opt-in, they've actually got to come to you and say, may I have your permission to use all of the financial data that our company uh, has gathered about you? Healthcare data about your daughter searching for uh, information about anorexia at age 13, uh, that you have to get their permission, the family permission, before you start selling that information to 50 companies that might want to start advertising right there on that site t towards that 13-year-old girl. So there's a big difference between opt-in and opt-out. Uh, the FCC, I, th I think, had it right. Okay, people are buying this uh, service, the broadband service. It's expanding dramatically. Privacy is now basically for sale across our country. And these are the most sensitive pieces of information about a family uh, that uh, can be obtained. So uh, we're going we're to have to just continue to have a national fight over this issue because I think it's as fundamental uh, an issue uh, as we have in our country. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.